guys. It's Sunday. Yeah. I totally forgot that it was uh, spring forward. That it was, uh, what yeah. do you call it? Yeah. It daylight savings time. Yeah, it was. It's like I woke up and I was like, wow, I overslept until like 8.30, which is like really, really late for me because usually I wake up at like before 7. But then I came in my office like after a few minutes and I was like, why is it 10 o'clock already? I'm like, that's not funny. And then I was like, oh, spring forward. So, you know. Yes, uh, I, I got up, did laundry, ran down to the biker bar, was there all day. Yeah, he'd been at the biker bar all day. Yeah. You know what's really funny? I was like sitting here and I was like, holy shit. Like I did uh, a bunch of shit today and uh, you know, oh, well, okay, okay. And uh, did some videos, made some videos and edited them and stuff. And then I'm like, oh my God, we have to do the show at five. I'm like, did he forget like what time it was because we went forward on the thing, although his tablet should have updated automatically. Yeah, it was all updated. And then it's like 10 till and I'm like, um, is he not coming back or whatever? No. And then like, um, I had just got the new ethernet cable. Cause remember we had, uh, we got the ethernet cable before and we hooked it up and it worked really good like on Friday night's show. But that ethernet cable was only 50 feet long. So, like, right after that show, I ordered a 100-foot one, and yeah. it came, like, 15 minutes before the show started. Yeah. So, we had, so I had to, like, unroll it and, like, take it, like, all the way down. I hooked it up. That's so. what we're on now. It seems to be working good. Yeah. So far. Yeah. I was down at the fucking, down at the biker bar, hanging out with those dudes and uh, taking videos, and uh, I was getting into it, I'll tell you that. And if I could post one of them, and DJ Maniac, he's online right now, he goes, dude, man, you need to get back. You got a fucking live stream. And I was like, oh, yeah, I guess I did. Yeah, so I see. shut it down right then, fucking made, and then came back. See, we've and even then, got, like, yeah. your like fans out there who's like, uh, Tom, get your dumb yeah. ass home, please. No, I was just, oh, I got a half hour, I'll be fine. I kept... Because I was sitting up here going, yeah, I got a half hour. Like, he's fine. in such big fucking trouble. Yeah, because I didn't think he was gonna get back in time. Because it's like it was like quarter till, and I'm just yeah. or like ten till or something. I'm like, come on, what the fuck? I'm not doing this by myself. Yeah, come on. yeah. No, I was getting all kinds of attention up there, so fucking, I, it's time. Tom, to like, Tom needs attention. Getting all that fucking Tom attention and shit. Everybody buying me drinks and everything. So. Just how, it is. how many? How many drinks did you get bought I had, for you? Uh, three, uh, two or three of them. Oh, that's nice. Two or three of them, and I, I paid for four myself. Oh my I walked goodness. out of there fucking twenty bucks. Twenty bucks is what it cost me. Oh, okay, that's not bad. No, that's not bad. That's not bad. That's not bad. No, they, I'm trying to think. Well, I no, they they were they were on easy on me. They're like here, here, here. <laughs> like, I guess I'm entertaining everybody. But, I, I spent thirty dollars yeah. thirty dollars at Dollar General. Yeah, if, if that's if that's any consolation. Yeah, you <laughs> choose some more cookies. No. Okay. What'd you get? I got I got cat treats. I got some makeup I was out of. Mm. I got um I got some can I got some coffee drinks in a can cuz they had them like 3 for $5 or yeah. something. They're uh and then I got some coffee creamer mm. and like a couple other things. I don't remember. Just yeah. like stupid little shit. Um yeah, so our, we're going to talk about Beverly Hills Cop, right? Right, yeah. Great okay. movie. We watched it again. We watched it Friday night after the show. So I was a little bit drunk, but I mean, I'd seen it before. I've seen it like a million times. Uh, so, so I remember the shit that happens in it. And honestly, okay, here's something that I didn't know. I mean, there's all kind of fascinating facts about this fucking movie. But one of them that I didn't know was that the director of it, Martin Brest, who I would probably change my name if Brest. I was him, but you know. Um, yeah, so he got, he directed this. He wasn't the first choice. I think they wanted Martin Scorsese to do it, which would have been a whole different, uh, ball game. But he actually, this was a massive success, obviously. He went on and did Midnight Run, which was, I think that was Robert De Niro, right? And like, yeah. so that, then Scent of a Woman with Al Pacino, Meet Joe Black. And then after that, he did that fucking movie, Gili, that one with Benifer. Like, Ben that. Affleck and Jennifer Lopez, the one that everyone said was, like, the worst abomination ever. I didn't see it, yeah. I haven't seen it either. I kind of want to watch it just out of curiosity because it got shit on so hard by, yeah, like, pretty much it. every... It's one of those, like, infamous bad movies, yeah. like Showgirls or uh, Ishtar or something like that. Yeah. And I don't know. I don't. I, I don't know if I want to see it or not. Because, <laughs> but it was one of those movies, and I didn't realize that that was the same guy that had directed Beverly did Hills he, Cop. Did he do Beverly Hills Cop too? Um, I don't 
No, okay. that might have been a different because I think we're gonna we should watch we're gonna watch we're Beverly Hills Cop too, yeah. tonight and then talk about that tomorrow and maybe yeah. do the third one. So we might do the whole trilogy. Because I'll tell you one thing, Beverly Hills Cop. This movie is a great movie. It's fun. It's a low budget movie, but it's just a great movie. Um, there's something about the dialogue, Eddie Murphy, the music, the edit. It's a low budget movie, but it's punching way above its weight. I, I always I loved this movie from the time it came out, and there's so many memorable lines from this movie. Um, is it perfect? No, it's a low budget movie. It's just a good movie. It's yeah, a, I think a, this only costs what like fifteen million or yeah, which that's twenty nothing. million or something like that. And I have to say too that this was actually the highest grossing movie. Um, of 1984, at least like in Nor in North America, as far as I know. Hit. And think of all the other shit that came out in 1984: yeah. Ghostbusters, yeah. Gremlins, The Terminator, yeah. And this beat all of them. Yeah, it was this a made huge hit. like 234 million fucking dollars. Yep. And yeah, I mean, this was like a massive. Now Eddie Murphy had been in a couple movies prior to this. I think he was only 23 when he made this movie. It's ridiculous when you he look had at done. It. He did Trading Places before this, right? I think in he 48 did, yeah. hours, maybe. Yeah. Um. So he was like a big star, but he doesn't I think... come off as that young though. He doesn't. Yeah, he, he doesn't. Com he comes I was off... actually surprised when I find he out. He comes off as that. a guy in his thirties, but no, he's real young. But it's just a great detective movie, even though he's a cop. But he's doing it. You know what I mean? He he's still on the force. He's just doing this shit on his own, and it solidified this Axel Foley character in my mind. And I was just like, I just think he's a fucking great character. Now. Beverly Hills Cop Two, I I remembered it being better. We're gonna see it tonight. I remembered it. I remembered that being be actually better than this one. I mean, I'm sure I've seen I've seen all of them at one right. point or another. But honestly, this one is kind of the only one that sticks in my mind. Yeah. Um. So Not, I'm kind of I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing the second one. I remember again. I remember two being better. And I, I don't remember, know. It'd be hard to be better yeah, than this one though. I, I, well, we'll see. But I remember it being better. <laughs> And then I remember uh, three being oh no not as good as as one or two. I kind of feel like that's the overwhelming yeah. opinion that people right. were like, oh, the first two are great, and then the third one. Eh. Like, yeah. But you know, by the time you're getting to the third one, everyone's right. just kind of like, no thanks. But one of the really reasons why we're revisiting this one, and I haven't told, I don't know if I told Jenny this, but the reason why I wanted to revisit it because I have heard that the next Eddie Murphy to come movie to come out is going to be an Axel Foley movie. They have been talking about it for a really long time. Which, yeah. Now they came out with fucking Coming to America Two. It was it was a great movie. It was a good great PG movie. You know, uh, I think that was a Netflix only, wasn't it? When that came out, was it? Yeah, Netflix? that's a it's a Netflix original. Right, course, Netflix original. Yeah. So um, I don't know if if that's going to be the case with uh, with Beverly Hills Cop Four, but I have a good feeling that the next Beverly Hills Cop movie that comes out will be a hit. It'll be very good. I mean, if they do a good job on it, I don't yeah. see why it wouldn't be. I mean, like I said, Coming to America 2 was yeah. all right, but, you know, Dolomite Is My Name was pretty fucking Much fantastic. Better. Yeah. Fantastic. So, That's a I don't great know. standalone. I, I kind of feel like, like, yeah, if they did Beverly Hills Cop, because look at all of the, all of the stuff that they're doing now, uh, you know, with like reboots and stuff like that from the 80s. I feel like there's a, like a really big audience out there for that. Do you know what's really interesting? I didn't know this prior to like research in this movie but back in i think it was 2013 i want to say mm. they actually were going to do a tv series based on beverly hills cop mm. they made a pilot it was going to be i think eddie murphy was going to be in it but it was mostly going to be the main character is going to be like his son who was also a cop and uh so they made the pilot and uh, you know judge reinhold was going to be in it and like so they had some people from the original movie but apparently like it didn't get uh picked up so they just kind of like abandoned it they're in there going banana to tailpipe that's right banana to tailpipe <laughs> <laughs> there's so many fucking lines from this movie that are iconic even jenny was like oh me and my brother used to say that we there's just a lot of shit when you were kids and they played this over and over again on fucking cable and me and Mike Kowalski, Granthers knows who he is. Me and Mike Kowalski would watch this shit on VHS fucking just over and over again. We just fucking loved it. This one and the second one. And there was just scenes in it that would stick in your head, you know. And it, you had to be there at the time. It wouldn't happen today because the social media just fucking overwhelms everything just with the sheer volume of data. But in the 80s, you know what I mean, you were limited. 
in what you could see and what you could get your hands on. And this bitch here was just, this was just a great movie. And I'm, I was, we watched it last, uh, what was it, last night or the night before? It was Friday night we watched Friday it. Friday night. So yeah. the, and uh, we, I watched it and I was just like, this, this holds up. I'm pretty oh, sure. Oh, it totally this does. This holds up. It, it's a good movie. Yeah. And it, it's a good, just a good detective movie. Is it accurate? No, no, it's not. We got Grampers in the, in, 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 we got Grampers in the fucking, in the, in the audience. He, he's a professional policeman from this area, or ex cop. You couldn't do the shit Axel did and got away with it. They would fucking fire your ass. But that was kind of like that's like but, a trope of yeah. like action movies and comedies, especially right. in the eighties, yeah. where you know the guy that doesn't play by the rules, but he gets right. the job done, so he gets away with it, even though right. he's always in trouble. That's right. kind of like that. Yeah, that's like a now trope. weird thing about this movie is that this movie was gonna be a Sylvester Stallone movie. Yeah. He but Sly said, "Well, I want this change. I want my name to be this and this and that." Cobretti. Yeah, he went, I want my name to be Cobretti. I want, I want this to happen. <laughs> and he went, nah, then this movie isn't uh, for you. No. But another dude heard that and goes, no, I'll make that movie with you. I'll make that movie. And it split into two. It became Cobra. 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 So Cobra was the fucking... Cobra was like kind of like the offspring of this movie. But originally it was going to be um, a fucking Sylvester Stallone flick. Yeah, like dark and gritty. Yeah. And honestly, you know what's yeah. crazy to me? Like, you know, this many years later, c considering how iconic this movie is, yeah. Eddie Murphy was absolutely not the first choice for this. Mm. Uh, you know who the first choice was? Mickey Rourke. Oh, God. It uh, would, this movie would have been forgotten. And Mickey Rourke, I love Mickey Rourke. But, yeah, he's good, um, it would have been forgotten. But I, yeah, I don't think that he was the right... Well, no. because when they were first, like, you know, throwing this around, like I said, Martin Scorsese was going to be the director on it. So they were kind of... At first, kind of, kind of going in a more like gritty action movie direction, but then as it evolved, it started. They started like lightening it up more, so it was more like a comedy. Um, but even then, I kind of feel like uh, who the fuck else? There was like a bunch of other actors that they asked to be in it. There were some of them were comedic actors, but most of them were like kind of serious. And I just don't know how that would have worked out. But that's fucking funny about Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, so they asked him to be in it, and he's like, well, you know, he's a writer, too, uh, obviously. And he's so good he's dude. like, good dude. yeah, and he's like, oh, I want to rewrite it. So yeah. he re rewrote it to be, like, super, super dark and gritty. Yeah. So much so that they compared, like, his opening scene in it to like the Normandy invasion <laughs> like it was gonna be this big fucking uh this big fucking violent whatever yeah and uh yeah so they were just kind of kind of like no we're gonna we're gonna be we're gonna funny pass. instead yeah so yeah there was that but I do it's just weird how it evolved over the years and I think didn't they do a movies that made us about this I kind of feel like you uh, know that Netflix series yeah I think maybe they did did they because I, I kind of I really do feel like maybe it the, sounds familiar. They it, did it, do it. It was at least mentioned in it. Yeah. The 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 thing is is that Stallone actually had good ideas, but it was far outside the scope of what Beverly Hills Cop. Yeah. Is. He was talking about Cobra, and somebody said, "Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll do that." And then they made the movie Cobra, and I I've seen that recently, about a year or two back, and Cobra actually kind of holds up. I rem it, it's actually better than I remembered. I'd have to watch it again. I remember not liking it when I saw it first yeah. time. When I first saw it, I didn't like it. I saw it again, and I was like, no, this is actually pretty good. Um, it's funny yeah. because they actually made a yeah. joke about that in part in Beverly yeah. Hills Cop 2. where there, I think there's actually a poster of Cobra yeah. in there in the background. Right. And I think uh, yeah. What's-Her-Face is in in it too that was in Cobra what's her name Brigitte Nielsen Brigitte Nielsen yeah I think she like turned up in both <laughs> movies like it's kind of like a joke yeah. she's in both movies that's what I'm saying she's in part two yeah so that's why they they were like kind of making yeah. a joke about that it, um fucking Cobra I didn't like it the first time I saw it but on repeated viewings I was, no it's pretty good is it as good as Beverly Hills Cop no fuck no no Beverly Hills Cop's better. I mean, very few movies are as good as Beverly Hills Cop. Yeah. You, want, you, want yeah. To, you know what's interesting? I See, because I'm always interested, especially movies that came out in the 80s, like when I was growing up, that I saw when I was younger. And a lot of times, you know, stuff that you saw, some of them you see them later and you're like, oh my God, that sucks so bad. It's like, you just like it because of nostalgia. So I'm always kind of interested in people that weren't even fucking born when this shit came out. And then they see it the for the first time, like recently. And I'm always kind of interested how they see it so i saw this one reviewer who he's not that young he said he was born in 1988 
but he had never seen this movie and he watched it last year and he just thought he said he was a fan of Eddie Murphy's like uh, old stand up. Mm. So he had seen that, but he had never really seen he had never seen this movie. And he just thought this was like one of the funniest things that he'd ever seen. Yeah. So I guess like the the humor does still hold up for like younger people seeing it now for the first time, even though you don't have the context. Well, the world holds up. Yeah. That this is in. This is happening in the 80s in Detroit and in Beverly Hills. And it's a fish out of water story about a cop who went rogue to become a private investigator to solve the murder of one of his hoodlum friends. And he has to go to he has to go to Beverly Hills to do it. Where it's fucking it's it especially in those days, fucking polar opposites. Detroit was fucking broke. It was fucking broke. Even Grampus is not saying that if you were a Detroit cop back in those days, you didn't have any goddamn money. They didn't pay peanuts. Yeah. He goes to Beverly Hills, the fucking richest neighborhood in the United States at that time, to f- solve a murder. He's a total fish out of water. He's in his old fucking jalopy, his old fucking beat-up I love car. that. There's fucking Delorean. Because I still have a fucking, jalopy nowadays, yeah. so I'm always kind he's of like... <laughs> And he's trying to survive around these cops, and he's... According to his job, according to his boss, now his boss in this movie, Grampus mentioned this too. Yeah, a couple of people mentioned. I it. believe he really was the chief of police. Yeah, or he was a cop at least. At, the, at least yeah. a cop. I think he was the chief of police at that time. Plays the chief of police of the Detroit Police Department in the movie. It's it's that it is actually him. I think he was the chief of the police. That's the way I remembered it. He did the he he did a cameo role as himself. Like yelling at Axel Foley. Yelling at Axel Foley. (laughs) Chief, I'll tell you what. No, you got some ass left. I can see you you walked away. You got some ass left. For some reason, that that line always makes me laugh. (laughs) That always makes me laugh. You still got some ass left. Yeah, you still got some ass left. (laughs) Don't fuck with me, Foley. (laughs) Well, the awesome thing about this is like, I mean, Eddie Murphy improved a lot of that. You yeah. know the one scene where he's talking about like um, the two cops, like fucking Judge Reinhold and the, yeah. and the other guy, and he's saying it's like you know these these aren't even just cops; they're super cops. All the visiting yeah, yeah. the capes, and yeah. this, that was all, uh, all improv. That yeah. was all improv. Mm-hmm. Um, I was watching something earlier. I think it's Minty Comedic Arts. He's this Australian guy, and yeah. he does like all these fun facts about different movies, and he loves eighties movies. So he was talking about this one, and he said yeah. that Eddie Murphy at this time. That he was getting like really tired because they'd done so many takes, and they were like, "Well, can we give you something to like pep you up?" And he's like, "Look, I don't want any." He didn't even want any coffee because he's like, "I don't want any drugs or anything of that right. kind." Uh, but they were like, "Come on, just you know, please." So they kept giving him like little bits of coffee so he would get all like fucking perked up. And I guess because he didn't drink coffee at that time, I guess it affected him a lot more than it would normally. So they said, "Yeah, he was all hopped up on caffeine like yeah. during that scene." But yeah, he did improv a lot of shit. And a lot of the shit that he improved, you know, are some of the best lines in the movie. Yeah. I wonder if the whole, like, you still have some ass left line, because that's one of my favorite There's lines. There's no telling. There. Well, I, I talked about this on one of our earlier shows, and I mentioned Eddie. Eddie Murphy, f- for y'all who are too young to remember, almost I am too young f- to remember this, okay? Because a lot of this was going on when I was a little kid. Saturday Night Live was almost getting ready to get canceled. All the good talent, like John Belushi and all those guys, had died or left the show. And Saturday Night Live was going to die. Eddie Murphy basically single-handedly saved, saved Saturday Night Live back in the 80s. Uh, he had a really good energy. And he was real fucking funny. And on the back of some of the improv skits that he would come up with, Saturday Night Live was able to kind of recruit more talent because Eddie was there. Yeah. You know, he, he, uh, but without Eddie, SNL would have been under long time ago, you know, long time ago. So he kind of saved that. Uh, SNL is not funny anymore. <laughs> it's fucking shit. But, well, I don't think it's, well, I haven't watched it, uh, so I no. can't really say, but I, I kind of feel like it wasn't funny even when, e- yeah. like, even back in the even 90s. Back, even in the 90s, it wasn't funny. <laughs> uh, but it had its moments, but. Yeah. Eddie was, Eddie and, and the generation that, that he kind of brought in was the last of the funny for SNL. But he, Eddie was very fucking talented. He came from a time when you didn't carry a, 
a fucking camera around in your pocket. When the, he came from a time when if somebody when a camera was huge and when they put it on you, it put a lot of stress on you. Okay? He wasn't camera shy at all. He could improv and act. Back when film cost a lot of money. <laughs> that, you know what I'm talking about? Where doing six six seconds of bullshit costs fucking thousands of dollars. Right. You know what I mean? It was a different time. Uh, he was ahead of his time. And... Um, Man, I fucking I hope he comes out with I hope the next Eddie movie is Beverly Hills Cop Four. I hope they don't call it four. They should have never called the shit three or two. But that's just the way it was back then. We need another Axel Foley movie. Because Oh, I would on, watch it. On the back of what he's done so far with the Dolomite movie and Coming to America Part Two, Axel Foley a new Axel Foley movie is fucking would be awesome. Uh, especially when it had the right soundtrack. This is a great movie. If you guys haven't seen it, then it, it's a it's a much it's a must watch. This one and part two. Yeah, I mean, yeah. As, as far as eighties movies go, you yeah. really got to see this one. Like I like I said, nineteen eighty four was such an yeah. iconic year for movies. Like I said, not only this one, but Ghostbusters. And actually, yeah. the, Eddie Murphy was actually offered a part in Ghostbusters, but he turned it down to do this. To do, yeah, um, good choice. Because he was, I mean, he was friends with Dan Aykroyd. Yeah. So that's why. So he did actually get uh, asked to do that, but. I mean, that would have worked, too, I think. But the thing about Eddie Murphy that's so cool, and not a lot of comedians have this, because some people are funny, but they can't be relatable or likable or sympathetic. But Eddie Murphy is absolutely funny, and he's, like, naturally funny. And he's also somebody you can relate to. He seems like a regular guy, and he seems like a likable, sympathetic character. Yeah. Which, like I said, a lot of... Comedians can't really do that. No, but to him, like him, he just like has a natural. It's yeah, just, he's so natural. And, about he, and it. he's uh, he's very American, very American. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Even though this was a big hit, like all around the world. All, really. Yeah. Well, Which, that's why it was a big hit around yeah. the world. He's he's just very American. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, let's talk a little bit because some people were talking about the soundtrack for this. This is. <laughs> This is one of the most 80s soundtracks. The thing about it is that pretty much every song on this soundtrack was also a massive hit. Yeah. Uh, you know, The Heat Is On, that Glenn Fry song, yeah, all the yeah. Pointer Sisters songs. Nasty Girl. Uh, Neutron Dance. And then yeah, there was, yeah, yeah. yeah, there was that. There was like yeah. Axel F, obviously, like yeah. Harold Faltermeyer. Yeah. That song, I had forgotten how what an earworm that fucking song is. Because yeah. like when we watched the movie, I'm like, it's still like stuck in my head yeah. to this day. Um, you know, you know what yeah. I mean? That was like a couple days ago. But yeah, this, I mean, this movie was like, not only the movie itself, but like I said, the music from it was just like this massive cultural phenomenon. They even had like MTV had videos for every single one of the fucking songs on this. I think Patty, uh, was it Patty LaBelle on there too, on the soundtrack? I uh, want to say. Probably. Yeah. I remember Pointer Sisters had a couple songs on there. And there were videos for, like, all the songs, and they would play them on MTV, like, all the fucking time. And they had, you know, clips from the movies and everything. Mm. Some people also brought up Surge, the best yeah, character. Yeah, Surge, Surge. That was, Surge yeah, has that was... to make an appearance in every fucking... If there is going to be another, which I'm pretty sure there's going to be another fucking Axel Foley movie, Surge has to make I mean, an appearance Bronson in every fucking movie. Bronson Pinchot is still alive, right? Movie. I, I mean, he's so. got to yeah. be. Got to be. Got to be. Got to be. I mean, yeah. If I mean, if you guys didn't know, if you didn't grow up in the '80s, he was yeah. Balky on Perfect Strangers, yeah. that uh, sitcom. And so, yeah, he's only in this like two yeah. scenes or something, but it was like absolutely Makes a huge impression. It, it, Surge <laughs> was Surge was the, uh, the 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 gay character that showed up, and he's always selling something in an art gallery, and and <laughs> and really, Axel from Detroit has nothing in common. Is, it has nothing in common with this straight white dude from 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 but when you see the movie you're like he's trying to fucking have something in common with this artsy fartsy fucking gay white dude I really lo I love the and, interaction it's a great, between them it's a great scene every time he shows get up get the fuck out of here get the fuck no no I cannot I know I cannot and, fucking, and then in the second movie he shows up as a, as a fucking arms dealer selling <laughs> selling high tech weaponry and shit to Axel there's all kinds of cool shit that happens with fucking with fucking Surge yeah. yeah I mean Surge is a really good yeah. character it was <laughs> kind of good now I want to mention that one of the things that kind of fucked up Eddie Murphy in the later part of his fucking career from the night from the late nineties is that uh, 
the fucking LGBT community started to fucking cr come down on him about fucking gay jokes. Which, the gay jokes were funny. They were not fucking ha kind of hateful. They were just, he poked fun at everybody, if you ask me. I think it was totally unjustified. And then it kind of came out that he was running around that well there was a couple things that came out about eddie one he had some he had a foot fetish and he had yeah. which that wasn't a, that was, might have been a big deal for normies back then but fucking I'm just from like, our scene we're like he has a foot fit so fucking what, what? You, <laughs> what are you that's talking a pretty about? that's a pretty like okay. uh, tame fetish yeah <laughs> and another thing came out is that he was friends with a with a transgender prostitute and I'm like, and again nowadays, back then, like, like, and <laughs> me and Jenny hang out in clubs where there are fucking <laughs> tranny prostitutes, fucking everywhere. Some of them are bodybuilders. Remember fucking, oh fucking, what's his name? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember him? To were like, so what? So what? You got a friend who's a trans. Well, back then it was kind of back yeah. then it that, was that a big was, deal. That like, was like a big deal. Like, well, what are you doing? I mean, that's the mid eighties. Uh, that what was you, still. What are you worried about? That was still like AIDS panic and yeah, it was like, all yeah, that kind of shit crazy. going on too. There are gay jokes in this, but I yeah. don't. I don't think they aged because I have seen some movies from the eighties and nineties where like the gay stereotypes like aged very very badly and yeah, not they this, and they're kind of like hateful. They yeah. seem like a little bit hateful or they're like making fun yeah. of it. This one, it's kind no. of. I don't think it's really making fun no. of it. It's just kind of like. I mean, no. the, now I do love. I still love. He was the, more making fun of flaming. The, the one scene where he goes type. in where he wants to talk to, you know, the drug dealer guy mm -hmm. that he suspects being behind the murder of his best friend, because that's what the movie yeah. was about, in case you didn't know. And to get in there, uh, you know, because the guy, the, he, the, yeah. the, the maitre d', he doesn't want to let him in. Right. So he, he like, pretends. Yeah, yeah, and he just says, you know, what's, I can't remember this. So he's trying to, he trying to become a herpes simplex. I have herpes simplex 10. Well, he's saying, what, he's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. We, he, so yeah. I, I need to go talk to him to get in, right, right. before shit starts falling off the man. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, and so somebody came, got tested or something like that. You might, it wasn't him. He said it was like a friend of him. Right, yeah. Like and you might laugh at that scene and shit, but let's be honest. A real life James Bond would be a chameleon. He could become anything. And if, and if he had to become gay to get to the target, that's exactly what he would do. And that's what Axel does in this movie. That's that's what James Bond in real life would have to do. He'd have to, he'd have to become gay for a well, second. Well, the thing about to it... To get to where he's going. This he'd is kind to. of... Yeah, this is kind of interesting to me because it just occurred to me that the reason why I don't find that particularly offensive is no. because... He's not making fun of gay people. He's no. making fun of people's discomfort the, 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 with of the gay, gay people. people. Exactly. That's exactly. what he's exactly. making fun yeah. of. Yeah. And that's that, the that's where the joke is. So he's yeah. not actually no. like yeah. no. He had he had to become gay to get behind the to get around the maitre d to get to get there. And that's that's exactly what it was. The discomfort behind it. Tell him I have herpes simplex ten. <laughs> oh, maybe I should tell myself. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, yeah, why don't you do that? Exactly, yeah, exactly. It's fucking, It's a brilliant scene. Brilliant, uh, brilliant Fourth Row Down says Bronson Pinchot does a lot of audiobooks now. He did Horror Store, actually. Oh, that's cool. That's yeah. Grady Hendrix. I have it right there. Okay. Um, now I kind of want to listen to that. Although I have to say Horror Store is one of those books that it's better to like have the print version because it looks like an Ikea catalog, mm -hmm. and that's kind of like part of the fun. But it's still a good story, so, you know. Um, John Smith says Eddie's AIDS jokes and Delirious did not age well. Yeah, some of the jokes in that didn't. Now, I haven't seen Delirious or Raw for a really long time, so I don't know how humor well Humor aged. in general, we've said it before, does not age well. Yeah, which is why it. it's a lot more miraculous when you see yeah. a movie like this that is yeah. still absolutely just as funny as yeah. it was back in the 80s. Right. I think Ghostbusters is still funny, too. Yeah. Eddie Murphy of... In his twenties, was a product of his time. Everybody was. Doesn't matter fucking who you were. And no, it's just the way it was back then. He was a fucking great performer and a fucking great, a very creative dude, and uh, a, you know, a good American, a very good American entertainer. Um, fucking, I grew up with him, and we thought he was great. And he and watching his material, no, it aged well. He's good. He's good. Yeah, Everybody misses like I, him. this is still this yeah. is still absolutely funny. Yeah. And I mean, some most of the funniest shit. 
I think originally they originally conceived it as it was still going to be fish out of water, but it was just yeah. going to be he was an L.A. cop. Right. And then going up to Beverly Hills, but I think it works better this way because it's like way more fish yeah. out of water. Because L.A. is yeah, it's different obviously, but it's not different enough. Yeah. So Detroit, Beverly Hills. Yeah, that's difference. like polar opposites. Big so difference. I think that worked out a lot better. And I have to say too, I really really like the interaction between his character and like the two cops, like Jeff yeah. Reinhold and that. Rosewood, Rosewood and Taggart. There you go. Yeah. Like the, like this. the way they, where he takes him to the strip club and shit like yeah. that. I mean, just so, so fucking funny yeah. because like Taggart is like so uptight. Yeah. And that he's like the uptight, like by the book guy. And yeah. then, uh, Taggart's cause airy fairy kind of fucking, Oh, Hey, you know, do you know how much red meat you have in your bowels? And, and then, well, no, that's, that's, that's Billy, right? Judge Reinhold. He's yeah, yeah. like the younger one. Rosewood is fucking, it, yeah, you said, t- you said Taggart. Oh, no, no. Taggart yeah. Rosewood. Taggart yeah. is the uptight guy. Is the older uptight Yeah, guy. yeah. Rosewood is yeah. the fucking Judge younger. Reinhold is kind of like this sort of, he's not dumb necessarily, but he's just kind of, well, like, I don't know. Maybe he is dumb. He's like not really that bright. And he's kind of, you know, he's a cop in Beverly Hills. I'm sure they probably don't have that much shit to do. You know what I mean? So, yeah, he's talking about how much red meat you have in your bowels and stuff. Yeah. Like, why are you eating that? But, yeah, that's, like, one of my favorite scenes, too, is, like, when he orders them uh, room service and, like, has right. it, had them take it out to the car, like, while he's putting the fuck it. And Judge Ryan is all like, oh, that's nice. Yeah. Like, is, is that shrimp? <laughs> Brad says it wasn't a friend. It was a trans hooker he picked up That's in LA. right, yeah. I forgot and then she that. ended up being murdered. Yeah, but that was a friend of his. That was a friend of his. I just remember, yeah, I remember that being, like, a big scandal. That was a friend of his. Like, I'd have to, like, look up. I can't remember all the details, but, yeah, I do remember, like, My understanding was is that was a friend of his. I mean, that's the way I, I remembered it. It was just, but I think it was just kind of like a, a person in the scene that, you know, I mean, they hung out off and on and if you're ever in a fucking scene it's gonna have a good scene it's gonna have a bunch of people from a bunch of different backgrounds and you're gonna be friends with them all it's usually the scenes are fucking centered around nightclubs and you're gonna run into that you're gonna run into trans people and um some of them are prostitutes because uh, you know a lot of you straight people don't understand it a fucking tr- some trans people, if they fucking really look authentic and they look very convincing, they're worth a lot of money in the sex trade. There are people that are willing to pay a lot of money for that. They're very; those are popular. They're very popular. So you're gonna see those. It's just the way it is. Well, you and know. sometimes too, depending on uh, what they look like yeah. and uh, other factors. Yeah. Sometimes too, they have a hard time keeping a regular job because of people being uncomfortable with them. Right. So sometimes they are kind of forced to do that to make money. Right. uh, Which we knew someone like that. Yeah. That wasn't super happy about being a prostitute but didn't really have a lot of other options. That's where the money was coming from and it's very expensive to to, for the the treatments that they need. They need fucking hormone therapies and they fucking they want surgeries and they want so it costs a lot of money. And they have supporters, you know. So, hearing that that shit came out about Eddie, at the time I was like, that's some weird shit. But now I totally understand it. I understand. that We know people like that. Well, in a, in a way, I'm glad that it's not seen as weird anymore. Like, I think if it happened yeah. nowadays, I think, like, people would well, talk about uh, it. some people think it's weird. I, well, I, I, you know... I think people would still talk about it, but I don't think it would be like this massive fucking deal like it right. was back in the 80s. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. back then it was just like, <gasps> like everyone flipped the fuck out about yeah. it. Yeah. Now everybody would be like, oh, for like five seconds. Right. And they'd be like, oh, well, whatever. Right. And um, <laughs> uh, trans people like that can um, can be very cool. They're very interesting fucking, you know what I mean? They're, they're funny, you know? They're very funny. Um, one of the ones that me and Jenny were friends with at the club was what was funny about her is that she was built about like Arnold Schwarzenegger. She was a fucking bodybuilder that was trans. Yeah. And there was no hiding the fact that she was biologically male. She was fucking huge. It was all muscle. Too. She had like really big muscular. Yeah. Energy. Imagine Arnold Schwarzenegger with a wig. But for some reason in I'm going to want to misgender the person in her mind. She was convinced that she was female, but she was obviously a male bodybuilder. It was just... 
But we know other people that are... There are other ones that go to the club that are in the middle of making the transformation. There's about four other ones. We don't really know them that well, but they're around all the time. The one we knew, I haven't up. seen her a long time, actually. She had had top surgery. Yeah. Um, but like I said, she was doing like like i said a lot of prostitution and not super happy about it but yeah. you know needed money and so she had been in and out of jail uh quite a bit and so we haven't actually i haven't seen her in a long time so i kind of probably hope, in jail i kind of hope that she's okay probably like wherever she is because now yeah. that i'm now that i'm thinking about it i'm like something i hope nothing bad happened to her because it's yeah. been a while since i've seen her. i mean we haven't been out right to to ibar for a long time because she used to hang out there but I, I haven't seen her in probably in more than a year, yeah. so I, don't, I know she was in and out of jail. Like I said, because she was always getting arrested. Like the cops knew who she was because she was always getting busted. But, but for prostitution. It, but when it comes to Eddie, Eddie would drive around the L.A. area and the Hollywood area in his Ferrari. I think it was a Ferrari, and would pick up hotties from fucking all over town fr from the scene, and. Um, we're talking about women, but every now and then you're, he would probably going to stumble into some trans people. But that doesn't that doesn't mean he was fucking paying for anything. It doesn't mean he's having sex with anybody. It's kind of a dirty mind kind of situation where you're reading into things. You don't know what happened. Okay. And I'm not. It's, and it's been, really none of my business. No. <laughs> so chances are. Eddie being a cool dude, just running around picking up cool people from the scene. He didn't care who they were, just as long as they were cool. That's probably what it was. That's what I'm going to say what it was. Uh, Slasher Fred said, this movie came out the same year the most funniest slapstick cop films did, Police Academy. I, You know what? I feel like... I'd have to, I'm going to have to rewatch some of this. I remember seeing the first Police Academy, and I think I saw... The, which one was Citizens on Patrol? Was that the second one or the third one? They made, like... How many did they make? Ten? 50 there was a lot but i remember seeing the first couple and then being funny but i don't know you know i don't know how they would age because it's been like a fucking million years since i've seen those and uh Grimthers then said about uh judge reinhold in the most accurate masturbation scene in all of cinema yeah fast times at ridgemont oh uh, yeah i forgot about that <laughs> yeah. i mean yeah that was like that was like a painful kind of fucking yeah. scene for a lot of people to watch probably they're like oh uh, Granthers also says, debate and discuss, clinger on MASH, trans prostitute, or Section 8 faker. <laughs> Grimthers says, ironically, Eddie got caught with a trans prostitute. No. He wasn't caught with a trans prostitute. What are they talking about? Yeah, it was, yeah. He wasn't caught having sex with some trans prostitute. No, well, I no. think they were just in the same car. They were in the same car. Yeah. That doesn't mean, that means nothing. Uh, Grandther says, Eddie's got more kids than Bob Marley. Did, yeah. did his part to propagate the species. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, and Danny Rowling said, Matt McCoy was in Police Academy Miami. Hey, I just did, uh, I just talked about the movie Abominable, yeah. which he was also in. I thought, maybe I saw that. Maybe that's why he was familiar. Well, Matt McCoy, he was familiar because he was in Hand the Rocks the Cradle. That's where I knew him from. But I might be remembering him from Police Academy Miami, too. But, um, yeah, so... I can't believe, like, everybody here has probably seen Beverly Hills Cop, right? I feel like everybody in the world has seen Beverly Hills Cop. Except maybe if you're, like, really young. You get a pass then. Yeah, but, but if you're young, you need to see it. I mean, yeah. yeah. And and like I said, I have watched, like, some younger reviewers that didn't see it back in the old days. And, like, absolutely still think it's they one like of the funniest it. movies ever. Yeah. So it's um, not our imagination. Well, see, yeah, that's why I'm always yeah. kind of, like, interested yeah. to see. What they say. Yeah. yeah. Although I will say, it's kind of weird. It's like a... We've kind of talked about this before. It's like a really weird situation that isn't anything like what we grew up with. Because when we were growing up, like, you didn't like the same shit as your parents. No, that whatever was, they liked, it sucked. That was fucking weird. Oh, well, yeah. now, I'm not going to say that across the board. Because my dad was into, like, some good music that I liked also. Um, you know, he was, like, into the Beatles and the Doors and stuff. And I liked that. But, um, and I even liked that when I was younger. So, it's not, you know, absolutely the, like, applies across the board. But... <laughs> Yeah, it was seen as strange if you were into the same shit that your parents were into. <laughs> um, but now it says that doesn't really seem all that weird because now there's like fucking 20-year-olds on TikTok 
that are super, super into the 80s. Like, yeah. they're all into, like, 80s music and 80s fashion. There's, like, a whole subset of, yeah. like, people on there, and that is fucking crazy to me. There, There is some cool shit about the 80s. There's a lot of cool 80s in this movie. But one of the things that was in this movie that was 80s that was not cool was fucking J- what, Jenny. Jenny's fucking outfit. Like in this, in about the not me, not the that the other Jenny. Jenny. <laughs> Jenny's outfit about halfway through it was this baggy gray looking thing, and I'm yeah, just like, what was that? How about? the hell could you put a woman into some shit like that? It looked that was terrible. That's a thing, man. Yeah. It Although terrible. I have to say, just, I know that the character was named Jenny. I was also yeah. named Jenny, but I, just, I don't even know what the fuck I was wearing in 1984. I'm sure it didn't yeah. look any better than that. That's for sure, because I was only 12. Imagine if a members only jacket was a jacket and a pants. That's and it, it was like. yeah, it was like. Terrible. God. Gathered legs. Yeah. And it's like, well, that's one thing. There's a lot of cool shit about the 80s. And I liked a lot of the kind of some of the fashion in the 80s. But a lot of the fashion in the 80s was awful, especially like for women. Yeah. Like what was with the fucking shoulder pads and those big high fucking high ass like like aerobic looking like underwear. God damn, that looked awful. Yeah. But. Like, all that aerobics gear that everybody yeah. was wearing is, like, regular yeah. clothes, like, in leg warmers and shit. Yeah. And I had leg warmers, I'm not going to lie, you know, because I, I, I warmed when I was roller skating. But, <laughs> you know what I mean? But, yeah, that outfit was really... Terrible. God. So what else about this movie? How much you got uh, there in terms of fucking data? Not, you know, nothing really. I was nothing just, really. like, I was kind of, like, talking about is it. And like else? I said, most people have seen it and uh, have, like, kind of uh, talked about it. Yeah. And we talked about the whole like weird cobra situation. Yeah. Which All right, my take on the movie as far as 80s movie goes within the context of this movie, it's a 10 out of 10. It, you got to see this movie. If you haven't seen it, you have to see it. Yeah, I mean it's a required viewing. And I remembered fucking part 2 being even better. But we're going to watch that tonight. We'll see. Yeah, so we'll talk about part two We'll tomorrow. talk about it. And then we'll, because you have all three of them, right? I have all three of them. So we'll, yeah, we'll watch part two tonight and talk about that tomorrow, and then we'll yeah. watch part three. We can do that. And then. And then I want to see Golden Child. I mean, we can do the whole. We haven't now, seen Golden Child. Yeah, we watched it. But we haven't. But I don't think we've done a review on it. No, yet. we're gonna do. We're gonna do. We'll go but we can down. do the whole Beverly Hills Cop trilogy, and then we can do Golden okay. Child next week, I guess. Okay. So we'll see how that goes. All but right. yeah, I'm kind of like, look, I don't think I ever saw the third one. The Although third I'm, one's not. I might bad. be wrong. I it's mean, just, when I watch it, I may be yeah. like, oh yeah, maybe I did. See not, it. I don't remember it being bad per se. Just not as good as the other two. You kind of slightly like. Eh kind of like it was thrown together we'll see we'll see it's been a yeah. while since i've seen it uh yeah no need for me too says the opening and pacing is almost 100 percent. no spots drag for me yeah that's yeah this is really like a very very well paced like right. action there's always something yeah. action oriented or something funny going on it's, so it's it is, never boring it is as good as the other movies from this year say like fucking um ghostbusters it is that it is as good as ghostbusters yeah it's just a different kind of movie. It's a it, it's a police adventure. It actually made more money than Ghostbusters. I think yeah. Ghostbusters was like second. Okay. Um, right after it, but I remember seeing Ghostbusters in the theater. I don't think I saw this in the theater. I think I saw this on cable yeah. like a year or two later. I did see Ghostbusters in the theater, but um, yeah, I mean, like I said, 1984, man. And somebody brought up earlier, like I forgot, Nightmare on Elm Street. The first one came out in 1984 too. Holy crap. Yeah. That was like a fucking embarrassment of riches that year. I just can't believe that they attacked Eddie Murphy for having a foot fetish. I like cute feet, too. Feet are ugly. <laughs> if, if, a, if, if, if a chick... The average foot is fucking ugly. If, if somebody's got cute feet, though, you do... You, yeah, you got cute feet. But yeah. I don't understand. Because it is rare to see somebody It's very rare to see cute feet. I mean, my feet are just... They're, they're good. Looking. They're good. They're okay. They're, they're okay. They're okay. Feet. They're okay. I just, I just have my feet are fucking terrible. Workmanlike feet. Yeah. <laughs> not, not cute feet. Not cute. Not ugly. Cute feet. <laughs> I don't have a thing where I'm pursuing cute feet, but I fucking love shoes. But he appreciates. Yeah, he's. he's uh, I'm a, I got a shoe fetish, not so much a foot fetish. Yeah. Like now it's not so bad that I just need just the shoe. I don't want the woman. They got dudes that are that bad. Dudes that are so bad they Man, don't need fuck the, the women. I just fuck <laughs> woman. Just give me the shoe. Fuck, the I'm shoe not, doesn't like talk that. back. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's well, like, no, they got some dudes that are just so fucking bad into it that they just want the shoe. Yeah, and I can't just understand that. Like the object. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I can't understand it. That is kind of weird. Well, it's no, weird. it's a, it's all on a spectrum, so you can kind of see that's the very extreme end of the, the spectrum where they don't even need the person. They don't even need the woman anymore. Yeah. They just want the shoe. You know, <laughs> <laughs> which is <laughs> okay. 
I know where you're coming from, but it's too far, man. It's, it's too far. <laughs> yeah, well, well, like I said, if it came out, somebody like, well, look, man, Quentin Tarantino has made a fucking career out of having a foot fetish. Yeah, and everybody makes jokes about it, but nobody's yeah. gonna like, you know, his shit is a little weird, though. He's in the feet that I'm not into. He kind yeah. of yeah. He yeah. likes like Uma Thurman. They're like feet. longer feet. Yeah. Type of, no, little short, little fucking baby feet. I can understand that. <laughs> he likes baby. Little baby feet. <laughs> you know, okay. I can understand that. But it's a, this is the way the Chinese would say. The Chinese like the foot wrapping, the, little <laughs> the, the feet foot binding, like, where the it's like binding. major, yeah, major yeah, feet yeah, all yeah. like deformed. Yeah. Right. Right. So you could right. fit them in those I little. I can kind baby of feet. yeah. I can, but no. That's fucked up. Yeah. I've seen some of those actual like foot binding shoes like in museums and yeah. stuff and it's like I can't even imagine. No, that, it was it was too Yeah, don't strange. if you haven't seen them like don't google no. like how that what that did yeah. to your feet cuz it's like really gross. Yeah, looking. so you said no need for me said the opening and the pacing is 100%. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Really the movie the movie is kind of 100%. The ending of the movie ends in a big shootout. You can tell that the shootout is more like wrapping it up. There is a bunch of gun mythology in it. Let me get into the guns before we sh- before we start this. Some of y'all are gunna gunophiles. I'm a fucking I-, I love fucking guns. It has some aspects to this movie. Axel Foley is fucking through the through the movie. He's carrying a Browning High Power. They came out in 1935. It's a very classic single action automatic fucking dual column 9mm pistol it was retro even in the day that this movie came out but a good choice better than the Smith & Wesson double action autos double action autos that were around at that time or DSA autos which they show some of those in the, in the flick uh, fucking the Browning High Power was the elegant solution and to me when I see a fucking civilian Browning High Power I think of Axel Foley uh, so now his shooting skills fucked up in the movie but I'm not gonna fucking talk much about that his tactical shit's fucked up uh, in a lot of the fucking things where he's firing at the enemy his eyes are closed so he's not staring over the top of the slide so you know Eddie is not a real shooter but it's okay it's just a fucking movie it's a comedy it's too. just a fucking I mean, comedy yeah. Yeah. Uh, another thing that happens in him that's not not fucking all that is that the bad guy Victor Maitland shoots Eddie broadside in the shoulder. Broadside. Should have been this way because he was turned sideways. Shoots him broadside side in the shoulder with a fucking four inch or three and a half inch, but three inch. 41 Magnum or 44 Magnum Smith & Wesson revolver. Eddie's narrow ass. That, shit, that bullet would have went through three Eddies sideways. And it just goes into his fucking shoulder, but he shrugs it off. No, that's that never would have happened. Not with that. Not with what he got. But like with. I said, you can't that just never pick on that movie because yeah. pretty much every action movie in the eighties, like yeah. somebody gets like, shot, what? and in real yeah. life they'd have been yeah. like in agony, and they're just yeah. like, oh, "Well, I gotta shake it off." Yeah. It's just a flesh wound. He shook that. Just the flesh wound. <laughs> he got a shot a long way through the shoulder with a forty-four or forty-one magnum. Would have gone through straight through three Eddie Murphys. Even if it was a hollow point. And, but he's like, oh, I'm okay, I'm okay. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> it a bone, that if it hit and bone, that bone would have fragmented like a bomb. Yeah. And then that bullet would have fucking gone right through that rib cage and out through the other arm and through three other fucking Eddie Murphys. That would have killed him dead and shit. Uh, but it's just a movie. That's, just a yeah. movie. Just a movie. I mean, you know, if you yeah. like the movie, you'll forgive a lot. And like yeah, I said, yeah, they yeah. did that a lot in the 80s. Like, people yeah. get, well, they still do it nowadays. Like, somebody in a movie gets horribly injured, yeah. not just shot, like any kind of like horrible yeah. injury. And they're still, hey, can you be, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. No, a crocodile like bit my leg off, but I'm, I'm good. I'll, I'll yeah, make I'll it. Yeah, I'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be all right. Yeah, I'll be all right. Yeah. Oh, one more fact that I want to, I really wanted to bring this up because this is crazy to me. Remember how I said that Martin Scorsese was the first director that they wanted for this? Mm-hmm. You know who another director they asked to do this was? David Cronenberg. Good. David Cronenberg directing Beverly Hills Cop. Uh, he would have gotten a wrong, and the, the tone would not have been. That's right. what I'm saying. That would have been really, really weird. Like I said, it. Yeah. I don't know. Like I don't really feel like has he ever done anything like funny. I don't think so. Yeah. Like, he doesn't really do a lot of body horror anymore. Yeah. Like, he usually does kind of crime thrillers nowadays. 
Um, but or that type of thing. Mm. But in the eighties, man, mm. that would have been super Good. bizarre. All right, now my boy Graham jumps in and says Detroit PD would have issued him a Smith and Wesson model sixty six with a six inch barrel. Probably right. Sixty six, I believe, was a three fifty seven Magnum. I think. I had a uh, uh, what was that? The uh, I had a fucking Smith and Wesson uh, five eighty six with a six inch barrel. It was three fifty seven Magnum. I think the sixty six was three fifty seven too. Um, now, uh, Grampers was, Grampers, he was Michigan police, but you, you weren't, uh, were you PD? Were you, um, Detroit Police Department? I don't remember which, which, uh, agency you worked for. But, uh, yeah. Then again, although he was a detective, so maybe a detective would have been able to purchase his own firearm. I, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not you sure would, how, would I'm not sure how it would have worked back then. Right. A fucking, a, a B cop, patrolman probably would have had to carry an issue weapon but I think a fucking detective probably would have by his own see what he said and a um, a Browning High Power would have been a retro choice but kind of rational in uh, 84 was it yeah. 84? 84? yeah that would have been older because that came out in 1935 uh, but you know firearms development pre-computers uh, didn't move along all that quickly. AutoCAD had a lot to do with the development of fucking firearms. Um, I can see that. Oh yeah, it changed shit a lot. And the uh, the Browning High Power 1935 Browning High Power was fucking relevant way into the 80s. Uh, now Smith & Wesson was coming out with some double action, single action auto Nine millimeter and forty Smith and Wesson stuff that was kind of nice, but they were kind of bulky and unproven. Uh, the Browning High Power was slim and kind of refined, single action auto. It had a really good grip angle. It fucking was one of the best grip angles back in the day. You you just grab it. And you go, oh, this feels fucking great. It was a natural pointer, kind of like a nineteen eleven, but a little tighter up around the top of the fucking back strap. Just you gun people know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, my fucking Walther P99s, uh, Walther PPQs, they got a new version of fucking the PPQ that just come out. They kind of have that same feeling around the grip. It's kind of narrower at the top. Narrower than, than, say, a Glock. And there's just something nice about the way that they point. Um... Let's see what Graham. Yeah, Grandther said I was a Fed who worked in Detroit. My official title was special agent. Okay. Okay. Now you went by Mister or Sir. Okay. Now, now could could you purchase <laughs> your, could you purchase your own firearm though, or did you have to carry something that was issued? That's what I want to know. Because could could Foley have been able to purchase his own Browning High Power and carry it as a detective? It, well, the thing about it is that. Technically, when he went to Beverly Hills, he was technically on vacation. Yeah, but they showed his firearm back in fucking... That's true. Back in Detroit, and it was that Browning High Power. Oh, okay. When his friend broke into his apartment, and he pulled it. Yeah, that's he did right. his bullshit... I forgot. His bullshit fucking IMT, Individual Movement Tactics, the fucking... Fourth Row Down says, I guess this is in reference to me saying about David Cronenberg, like directing yeah, yeah, this yeah. movie. Fourth Row Down says, yeah, Axel Foley discovers that the bad guy is the incredible yeah. melting man. <laughs> right. Grafter says, no, he would not have been able to buy his own okay. firearm. Okay. Well, there you go. Right. Now we know. Now we know. But, so yeah. it would have been a Model 66 Smith & Wesson is what Grafter is saying. Okay. But like I Which said, is a revolver. it's a movie, right? So okay, I don't want to be one of those people that's like, because okay. I know that there's whole YouTube channels probably right. of people being like, well, this is not correct. But it's like you know, have have a fun time. Just watch the movie and don't think about it too. Well, <laughs> guys want to know about the equipment and the fucking shit that is that you know we want to know. We don't. It doesn't. It's not. Gonna it's take, like it's funny. It's not going to take us the way out of the movie. We just want to know. Well, what would it really be like? I kind of feel like yeah. it does though, because a lot yeah. of times, like we'll be watching a movie, yeah. and he'll get like all wrapped up in that kind of stuff, and then he's like, "Wait, what's happening?" Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. he's like, oh, who's, "Who's this now?" <laughs> Graham, is, Graham is saying you could only in Detroit. You could have only carried what was issued, and it would have been a Smith Wesson sixty six. 
That's what he's in those days. Okay. Well, there you go. Okay. I mean, to me, I was just like, he has right. a gun. It's fine. Yeah. Let's get on with the story. Yeah. <laughs> the guy want to know the details. The guys want to know the details. <laughs> Let's yeah. get on with the story. Let's see what's going on. Right. But yeah. Um. Yeah. I get it. I get it. Yeah. Right. So I'm just saying. I'm just. I'm just fucking with. But you. the Harleys are out there riding around. Yeah. It's Sunday. Everybody's. But, out sti- on the but still, Graham. Today. The fucking Browning High Power was a fucking nice choice for fucking eighty four, eighty five. That would have been that would have been a great choice. Yeah. 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 Alrighty. So, man, we went on almost an hour. Yeah. Um. So we're gonna watch Beverly Hills Cop two this evening. Yeah. We'll and we will that. be back tomorrow, talking about that. So hopefully you can join us for that because I haven't seen that in a long time. I forgot everything about that. Jason's asking, is Detroit a really rough city? I'm laughing. Yes. Detroit was the fucking apocalypse, especially back in the eighties and the nineties. 80s, 70s, 80s, 90s. I mean, I feel like it's better now because a lot like, of people left, but yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, it's nowhere near as dangerous as it was because they're all dead or gone. Because they're it's mostly like Yeah, abandoned. it's gone now. They tore a lot of it down. <laughs> but back in the day, it was like fucking Beirut. It was fucking bad. Yeah. I loved it, though, as a kid. I loved it. Yeah, because you lived there in, what, the 90s? Yeah, early before 90s. I went into the service. Yeah, early That's where 90s. I bought my first pistol, and I bought it from a crackhead. <laughs> It was a CZ-75. Yeah, it was a Tanfaligo CZ-75. Thanks, crackhead. Yeah. yeah. Well, hey. Yeah. He got crack, you got it. It didn't work, though, but I fixed it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, well. Yeah. Uh, all right, so we'll be back tomorrow talking yeah. about Beverly Hills Cop 2. So we'll see you guys then. Thanks for joining